Okay, traders, welcome to today's online education series with me, Patrick Munnerly. Um, before we get going, can I just get a quick um, audio and sound check? You should be able to see a Tickmill um, welcome screen and a, a Y in the chat box. If you can hear me uh, loud and clear, would be great. Can I get a, a Y in the chat box? If you can hear me, please, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we will uh, we'll get going here now. Um, before we get started, obviously, we want to um, be aware of our risk, and, uh, and and we're paying attention to that at all times when we're involved in the market. And like I say, every week, you guys are, uh, are helping yourselves mitigate that risk by participating in these um, online education sessions. I'll just give you a second to review that. Okay, so um, most of you will be familiar with me by now, I guess, but for those who aren't, I'll just give you the quick rundown of my, my background. After I graduated, I went into the world of consulting. I um, specialised in, in executive search. I then um, left the PLC that I was working for at the time and did a startup, an executive search startup. I experienced some rapid growth, and after uh, after four years with the firm, um, we merged with another firm, and I exited the business, uh, sold my shares and uh, I moved on to explore my passion for markets. Um, I began uh, trading, day trading the S&P 500 and uh, the market was predominantly trending north and I had some, uh, had some beginner's luck, I guess you would call it. And, um, and that beginner's luck lasted for a short period of time, as it tends to, and then um, the gains that I'd made, I gave back and then some. And after experiencing Quite a brutal loss. I decided to uh, to get serious about the markets and really to apply myself as a student of risk. So I sought out a mentor um, who I worked with to not only focus on developing my technical skills, but as he um, as he pointed out to me at the time, really to focus on my mental skills as well. So I spent uh, a, a huge amount of time really becoming more self-aware and um, and focused really on personal development along with my, my technical knowledge of the markets and really apply myself, like I say, as a student of risk. So um, it took me a couple of years to get a, a, a solid understanding, a solid business and trade plan together. And um, I developed that, back tested it, forward tested it and underpinned that with a, a rigorous risk management strategy that allowed me to, um, to go back to the markets in 2008. And since then on an annual basis, I've been profitable, and really, that's what what counts to me. I'm not I, I'm not concerned about the outcomes of individual trades or a, or a string of trades. What I'm looking for is my edge, my trading edge, as defined in my trading plan, to demonstrate itself over a significant series of outcomes. You'll notice I use the word outcome. I don't think of I, I don't really um, think anymore about tra trading in terms of of winning and losing trades. What I'm really focused on and where my, my passion is, is in my trading process. Because if, I know that if I adhere to my process and I stick to my trading plan, then over time, the returns will take care of themselves, okay? Uh, since 2010, I've mentored over 100 private traders in one-on-one in -on -one -on -one mentoring sessions. Um, helping trade, complete novices to guys who, who used to tr trade in the, uh, the trading pits in Chicago, um, really in developing uh, trading strategies, mental performance strategies, um, and trading execution strategies. I, uh, since 2013, I've been managing not just my own capital, but also external investor capital through uh, through a managed account service that I run. And, to, and that uh, service on an annual basis has also been profitable um, since 2013. 
and um, as well as being a resident market expert at Tipmill, um, where I provide uh, technical and trading analysis, I also am the head of trading and trader education for a firm called fxcareerswap.com, uh, where we work with, uh, with traders to take them from, from retail trading talent, I guess, to, through, to, uh, through to managing um, our firm's money through a funded account program um, and a profit share. So, uh, so that's really how I spend my time. My, my, my core trading strategy now is really an end of day strategy. It doesn't, it doesn't require me to be active in the markets during the day. Um, I, t I don't tend to trade intraday charts very much anymore uh, unless there are specific setups that I'm, I'm tracking. Um, so it gives me, a, I've got time on my hands to, to pursue these other activities. I obviously have a passion for markets and I, I always intend to, to remain um, involved in markets and, um, and I enjoy helping uh, other traders learn the realities of what it takes to go from, uh, to go from you know, a, a novice level understanding of the markets through to actually being a professional trader and, and what's possible in the real world, not in, uh, not in these uh, uh, Instagram ads that you see with uh, rented Lamborghinis, etc. cetera. Um, so, that, uh, that gives you a flavor of, of where I'm coming from. Now let's move into um, what, what I want to talk to you guys about today. In the last session, um, you will remember that we started to look at how we can use um, Fibonacci retracements to uh, identify high probability trade locations. Now, we've done this in a couple of ways. We've looked at, um, at how we can identify trends and how we can identify corrective patterns okay now um, those two pieces of, of information are obviously fantastic for us because we can use those to identify high probability trade locations and as traders that's really what we want to do we want to be able to open a chart and very quickly assess where we are in the market phase are we in a trend or are we correcting versus a dominant a strong trend because those pieces of information can provide us with trading opportunities and at the end of the day this the trading is not uh, just uh, an, uh, an exercise for mental stimulation we're involved in trading to make profits it's a business uh, a business uh, endeavor and so we don't want to spend a, all our days just gazing at charts and wondering what's going to happen next we want to be able to open a chart and very quickly identify is there a business opportunity that's, uh, that's present in, in this chart. If there isn't, let's move on and look for and look at another chart and see if we can uh, see if we can find something there. Okay. So in today's session, what we're going to look to do is identify once we now that we understand uh, the corrections and trends, what we want to do now is um, identify uh, beyond just simple support and resistance. I'm going to teach you how to project a high probability trend reversal target. For any market and pretty much on any time frame because that's information we can use every day as part of our trading plan now look there are a huge amount of books um, based on uh, fibonacci and fibonacci retracements um, and they these books uh, go into the, the depths and, and nitty-gritty of, of fibonacci and want to talk about its its magical properties um, but for me uh you know all, I, all I'm concerned about is the trading opportunity. Now, I encourage you, if you want to, in your, your spare time, to, uh, to, to read about Fibonacci. That's, that, that's a, you know, a useful um, endeavor if that's your area of interest. But for me, the Fibonacci tool, and note I use the word tool, is, uh, is really just a, a business tool for me and a way of identifying a, a high probability trade location. Now, what we're going to start to look at today is not just the Fibonacci retracements, and I'll go through those in, in detail in, the, in a short while, but we're also going to start to look at Fibonacci extensions and Fibonacci price projections. So there are two key types of retracement. There's an internal, which is the internal numbers between 0 and 100, uh, which most traders are familiar with. And then there's the external. So those are the, those are the Fibonacci uh, levels outside of the one, zero to 100%. And what we're gonna do is we are going to look at how we can use those today to identify 
a high probability trade location. Okay. So why is it helpful to know the key retracement levels for any market? Because most corrections in every actively traded market and time frame will tend to adhere to four key retracements. That's why retracements are key to help identify where a correction will end. So what we're going to look at now is the simple uh, retracement levels. And I'm going to just move this tool here so I can uh, show you those and I can show you the settings um, for the retracements so that you can use them on your, your own charts. Let's just move this around a little bit here. So um, when you're looking at this on, uh, on playback in the video, uh, shortly I'll post a link to, to all the videos in this series. Um, you'll be able to pause this and look through and you'll see the levels that I have. But essentially the retracement levels that, um, that we're going to, to look at are the 38.2% retracement, the 50% retracement, the 61.8% retracement and the 78.6% retracement. Okay, so those are the internal levels. And then the external levels that we're going to look at are the 1.272, the 1.618, and then the two. So that's or, or the, the, the one uh, the, that's 200%. So that's one that's twice the original retracement zone. And I'll show you now how that works. So here we have our fib retracement tool. We'll just uh, change one of the settings here to make it easier for you guys to see so we can see the trend line now this is uh, this is how we measure so if if this is our if this is the price action we're looking at and you'll know from last week that we're looking for trends that basically have a five wave structure like i said last week we're not going to lose our minds about elliott wave here and get involved in uh the you know the paralysis by analysis we're just looking for a simple structure that we can identify a five-way move because once we've got that move we then with relative certainty can look at some specific retracement levels so the first level we're looking at is the 38.2 percent retracement so that's all that's about a third of the way from this decline then we're looking at the halfway back which is the 50 percent retracement we then have the 0.618 and then the final level we have is the 78.6% retracements. Okay. Now, what, what do these levels tell us? Well, more often than not, and we'll use this now to show us the corrective move. So if this is our swing low, shortly we'll, we'll move on to actual price charts, but I'm just showing you this via the drawing tools so that you can get a, a very easy visual representation of what it is we're talking about. Let me just get rid of this here clearer there we go so this is our trend move where we've reached a swing low we then make a reaction high okay that this reaction high here is going to test into the 38.2 percent retracement so with respect to the 38.2 percent retracement as you remember from last week when we trade up to that level more often than not that won't qualify as the end of the correction or let me put that in another way from a high probability perspective, and that's all we can ever do in markets is, is think about probabilities. We're, we're not in the game of prediction. We're in the game of identifying a high probability scenario. And so when we test this 38.2% trace, more often than not, we will then make a, a secondary uh, reaction, a secondary swing low, okay? Once we have that level in place, then price is likely to make uh, a third wave higher. So we have an A, B, and a C wave. Now, more often than not, okay, and again, think of, let's always think in these terms. We, we're not talking in certainties, we're just talking in probabilities. So, more often than not, from a probabilistic perspective, a correction will complete between the 50 and 68 point, uh, and 61.8% and retracement. That's more often than not, okay? Now, can can corrections exceed that level well most certainly they can but fortunately we have another level whereby we can identify when the correction is potentially going to fail and the tre and, and, and a new trend is developing and that level for us is the 78.6 percent retracement 
Okay, so if price exceeds the 78.6% retracement from a probabilistic perspective, that would suggest that the trend, the, the, the initial trend move has now has now terminated. Just gonna take a sip of water here, guys. Okay, so what we're looking for ultimately is we're looking for a correction to complete in and around the 50 to 78.6 percent retracement zone now the reason why i put the 61.8 percent retracement on here today is that we can use that to give us a, a, an immediate level of interest once we have this a b swing level in place i'm now going to show you how we do that and that's with the external fib levels okay so once we have this a b in place we can actually use our fib retracement tool to overlay that swing and then that gives us some key levels that we can pay attention to and that's the 1.618 extension the 1.272 the two times we don't need the two times but let me just get rid of that we don't need that one for this we don't need that for predicting or, or identifying where the retracement is going to occur so we can remove that from the settings um, for this particular activity just so i don't confuse you guys there okay we're going to use that in a minute when we're looking at trends um, and then the next level of interest is the 2.618 extension okay so when i say extension again let's clarify that retracements are the internal so they're between the one and zero point so 38.2, which is the 38.2% retracement, 50, 61.8, 78.6. The external FIB levels are outside of the swing we're measuring. Does that make sense to everyone? Can you type a Y in the chat box if you're following along? So the external are outside of the swing. The internal are the FIB levels within the swing. second guys let's just see just want to make sure you're following along here good good stuff now how do we use these to identify a high probability price zone where price is likely to to uh, complete its correction well what we're looking for is something called a cluster okay and the cluster is where we have the fib levels combining together Okay, so with this, with the scale of this move to the downside, this trend move, and with this corrective pattern that we're, we're looking at here, once we've got this pullback, we've, we've completed the swinging point, once we exceed the A, which we know is a key criteria to suggest that we've got overlapping price action, which is going to define the corrective pattern, then we, then we can look for a FIB cluster area. We know that most corrections okay not all of them but most corrections are going to at least need to test the 50 percent retracement of the prior trend and what happens here is we have where the 50 percent comes in from a external from a fibonacci extension we also have the 1.618 of this swing so that's this swing combined with 0.618 of the swing, okay? And that gives us a target zone here. Now, we would, we would all be, we'd be looking at this target zone from the point that we take out the swing A, because this is a cluster. So on your chart, before we, we, could, before we even see the price action, we could identify that that level, okay, is, is a high probability area where we might well see the correction terminate, okay? Where's the next level? Well, the next level up is the 2.618. But if we look at it from a price perspective, there's, um, there's about 20 pips of the distance there between that level. Now, certainly that gives it, that gives it a target area, but the higher probability um, con confluence area is currently this one where we have a two pip range between the 1.618 extension and the 50% retracement, okay? So when we're tracking this setup, what we'd be looking for would be for price to test this area and for the correction then to complete and for the trends to continue to the downside. Does that make sense? 
Why in the chat box if you're following along? Now, let's 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 draw and let let's to, to clarify this point. Let's just um, remove that. Now, let's draw. Let's change the, the let's change the depth of the swing on our um, on our tool here. So let's say we get a shallower A point and a slightly deeper B here. So we're still in this still this qualifies as a corrective pattern once the C point once the C leg takes out the high of the A leg. Okay. So now let's overlay our extension tool and see do we get any clustering? Right. Well now we get clustering. The 38.2% gives us the 1618 as a cluster point, but what do we know about the 38.2% of tracement? Well, what we know from a probabilistic perspective is that when we test this area, we, it's unlikely to mean that the trend, that the correction is complete. What's more likely is that we're probably going to see a complex correction, which means that we're going to see a, a pattern more akin to this develop. One second, guys. So we're more likely to see a, another leg higher here to test where we have our cluster point, which now is the 2.618 plus the 50% retracement. So we're not, at the point that we were able to overlay these fibs on this swing, we're not gonna get too concerned about what price does from the 38.2% retracement, because although there is a cluster there, probabilistically we know that this isn't gonna be the terminal point of this correction, but we can see a cluster again at the 50% retracement. Okay. Now let's uh, let's look at another scenario here, just to uh, finish this point. So let's say we get a, a we we exceed the thirty-eight point two percent in our retracement, and then we get our B point, and we take out um, we take out our A our A swing high. So the minute we do that, we're able to overlay our fib tool and see at this juncture now. Um, we have the 1.272 extension coming in. Uh, we have the 1.618 just above. So we have the 50% of tracing. So now we have a 10 pip window where we could reasonably expect this correction to complete. Okay. So this gives us a 10 pip window on this chart after seeing this scope of move here. So this, this, this trend, this prior trend is, uh, is about 150 pips. But now we actually, once we uh, correctly position the fib tool there, the higher probability is the 1618 coinciding with the 50% retracement. So we could ignore the point, the 1.272, because it doesn't, we, by the time we test that level, we wouldn't have achieved the minimum requirement, the minimum condition, which is at least a 50% retracement. Is everyone following along? Now I'm going to uh, give you an additional piece of it, uh, an additional fib tool that we can use to help pinpoint the potential retracement, uh, the potential co uh, completion of the correction with even more clarity. And for this, we're going to use the Fibonacci um, trend-based fib extension. So I'm just going to draw it on here for now, so you guys can see some settings. Uh, like I say, you'll be able to review these in your own time. But what we're looking at is the 100%. Uh, so uh, that gives us an equidistant swing. And we also want to look at the 1.618. So now what we have is, um, is once we get this, uh, let's just remove that from there. So when we have our A point in place and we, and our, we have a B swing low, which, it, which qualifies as a low once the A swing high is taken out, we can now overlay our FIB extension tool, uh, our, our FIB uh, price projection tool to see where we have even more clustering by, um, by measuring and uh, projecting from a Fibonacci perspective uh, using our A, B uh, and our C point high here. And we also, again, we can use our, uh, our, swing to, uh, our Fibonacci extension tool so now we can cluster, we've got three Fibonacci points of reference, okay? We have our internal re retracement, 
we have our external extent extension of the um, A to B swing point, and we now have a trend-based Fibonacci price projection. So in this instance now, we're getting a cluster here um, between of, of about 10 pips into this area. So when we open, when, from the point that I, from the point we open this chart, and from a um, from a price perspective, we have just this. You know, at the point we have this pattern occurring, where we've taken out that A point, we're then immediately able to apply our Fib tools, and we're able to identify from a high probability perspective where the correction is likely to terminate. In this instance, we would expect price to move up to this area and for this correction then to terminate and for the trend to proceed to the downside. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got three tools to use to identify a high probability trade location. Does that make sense to everyone? Does anyone at this stage have a question? Feel free to type it into the, the chat box. Um, if I don't get to it now, I'll certainly try and answer it um, once I finish this, uh, this presentation. Okay, so now let's, let's move on and take a look at some, um, some actual price charts here. And, uh, and see what we can do with our tools. And this, we're using this, this uh, same piece of data. Let me get rid of some of these. Uh, we don't, don't need these at the moment. They'll just uh, confuse masses. That's it. We just want uh, our price patterns for now. Let me get rid of that. Uh, let's remove all drawings. Yeah, this. So now, uh, and we'll get rid of this. So now, remember, we have we've got a, we've got a bunch of tools now that we can start to use to identify high probability trade scenarios. We know how to identify a trend move. We are we know how to use momentum, and we also now know how to use the Fibonacci retracement tool, the Fibonacci expansion price projection tool and um, the Fibonacci, and Fibonacci extension levels. So let's look at some price action now. This, uh, the reason I'm using this Euro chart is because this was, uh, this, are you, this was um, posted in, on the Daily Market Outlook. You can go back to, uh, to one of my first pieces of the year on the 6th of January, where using this, this strategy, I was able to project where this, where this pattern would complete. And this was posted in real time. You can go back and check. And, uh, and you can all see how you then can actually use these tools in real world trading. I, I'm not a big fan of looking back over um, historic price action as such, but in this instance, it's the only method we have for teaching. So that you know, that's what we have to do. But what I encourage you guys to do is follow my daily market analysis, where you'll see the price patterns that I use uh, are formed using this type of um, analysis. So what do we have here? We have a five wave move that we can categorize just by looking at the chart, but we're going to draw it in. So we have a one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that suggests to us a trend move. Those, the, the price action we're seeing is not overlapping. Remember that key concept. We, we you know, Elliott Way technicians or theorists, as I like to call them, will spend a huge amount of time stressing about, you know, is this three, four or is this one, two? We want a simple approach. And the simple approach for us is if it's not overlapping and we can identify five sections of price action where the middle section is the longest of them all, then we're going to classify that as a trend move. Okay. And once we've got a trend move, then immediately what we're looking for is a correction. So once we have this price action, and, and again, the, uh, when I posted that, the daily market outlook, all we had at this stage was this leg and this low. And I projected using the FIBS, so let's draw it in here. This is our retracement tool to start with. And now we can look uh, at incorporating our extensions. So A, B, C, D. And we, let's not forget 
our external swing points once we've got that below in place yeah once we take out this swing high we then know we've got the opportunity to use our extension levels so for me in advance of this price action occurring i suggested that we would test up to the 112 level and the correction from a high probability perspective would likely terminate there okay and look what happened price moved up tested the 112 so we had a window of 111.96 to 112.06 to that's a 10 pip window after we after we saw a move down of 100 pips so we were i was able to accurately predict where we would likely see this correction terminate using this process of analysis and i, I really do suggest you guys all go and look at my my um, daily market outlook from the 7th of january and you'll see i i actually drew on these price bars suggesting where that pattern terminate. okay so now let's look what uh, so then what happened we got another trend move how do we know that well we've got a bunch of non-overlapping price action that we could easily we could easily look and categorize a five section move so we had zero one two three four five yeah and then what do we get well once we move up here we get a pullback now the beauty of being able, again, the beauty of using our, our RSI stochastic as our moment, uh, monitoring our momentum is we can use it to give us an objective view on swings. A lot of people get a bit confused or um, they, they're, they're, they're worried about identifying the swing point um, because they don't know exactly what classifies that. Well, when you're starting out, the easiest thing to do is just to use your momentum tool to track the swings. So we have a low, we have a high, a low, we have a high. Does, does this low, does this point that we might think is our swing low, does the momentum tool run back to the downside? Do we even get into the 50% area of that prior move to the upside? Well, no, we don't. But on this swing, on this retracement, we do get that low, okay? So at that stage, what do we do? Well, we're going to immediately bring in our Fib tool. And then we are going to bring in our extension tool. So we have our A, B, C point. We know once we've taken out the A, that we're looking for a minimum of an, of an equality move, so an A, B, C pattern, yeah? And we are able to use our extension level. So, what we've got now, let me get rid of this one, because that's confusing things. <clears throat> there it is. Let's go with you guys and girls. Um, what we've got now is we know at a minimum, yeah, at a minimum, we're looking for price to test the 50% retracement of the prior swing to suggest that the correction is likely to terminate, okay? Then we've also got the ability to look for the... Fibonacci price projection. And more often than not, we will at least see a test of the equidistant or the equality swing. So once we can measure the A, B, this C point gives us a D target up here, which exceeds the 50% retracement. Now remember, the 50% retracement is the minimum requirement for, for, a, for a correction, okay? It doesn't mean that every correction is gonna terminate the 50% retracement. But more often than not, we know from a probabilistic perspective, once we've been able to identify a trend pattern, that 50% retracement is going to be the minimum requirement for a correction. So in this instance, what do we have from a cluster perspective? Well, we have um, the 1.272, which comes in ahead of the 50% uh, retracement. So we'll ignore that, but we'll look at the 1.618, which comes in five pips above it. So what happens? Price moves up to that area. We test it, we get rejected from there, we consolidate, and we roll over. But we don't make a new swing, uh, we don't take out the prior swing low, which, was, which we know 
if this if the corrections complete then one of the, the minimum criteria is that we exceed the prior swing low to suggest that the trend is going to continue so in this instance we get another opportunity to measure versus our swing high which is there okay and we've now got another swing point that we can use with our FIB retracement to look for an extension. And where's our cluster? Well, our cluster now is the 0.618% retracement, okay, which comes in at the 111.59. We then have the equidistant swing, which is the minimum criteria, which we know more often than not is the minimum criteria for a correction, which, co which comes in at 111.66. And we have the 1.272 extension coming in at 111.58. So again, we've got about a 10 pip window there where with reasonable certainty, we can identify that the correction may well terminate in that window. Okay, and what happens? Well, price runs up, tests the level, spikes above it, doesn't close above it, and then sells off and ultimately, exceeds the prior swing low which suggests the trend continuation does that make sense guys can i get a why in the chat box if you've been following along how we can identify a high probability trade location based on being able to identify a prior trend swing and then beyond using just fibonacci retracements we can also use our FIB extension tool and our FIB price projection tool to give us this high probability trade location. Does anyone have any questions regarding what, what, I've, what we've discussed today? Aruna says, complicated, but kind of follow. It is, look, what I suggest you guys do is you re-watch this video, okay? It is, it, this is, you know, you're not going to pick this up in a 40-minute in a webinar. But what you can do is you can use this as, um, let me just see if I've got the link here to give you guys um, trade series on YouTube. Yes, I have. Okay, so this, um, this link I'm going to post in the chat box. Uh, is the series of these webinars um, for you. So you can re-watch from the beginning if you haven't joined us from the beginning, but you can re-watch these ones. Obviously now as we're, we're starting to progress, when we started out we were covering some relatively simple concepts. We're now starting to move into a little bit more technical work now. Um, next week we're going to look at how we can use um, cycle projection, so how we can use time to also help in assisting uh, identify these high probability trade locations. And then after next week, we're actually going to move into um, specific trading strategies that I use um, on a day to day basis. So, like I say, it's going to get a little bit more complicated as we start to progress now. Um, I su strongly suggest you guys um, follow my, my daily market analysis. Let me post a link for that. Uh, for those who don't have it, because you'll start to see how I use this, uh, these, these tools that I'm teaching you here um, to, to map the market and to identify the, uh, the high probability trades that I post on a daily basis um, in the chart of the day. Certainly, if you've been following along with those, you'll see that the market has been mapping um, the levels that I've been looking at very well. Uh, we've had some, some great trading and great trade setup, so I strongly suggest you can subscribe um, using that link there and you'll get my, uh, my analysis in your inbox. Um, but like I say, what I suggest you do is re-watch these videos, start to um, practice in your own time looking at the charts using this, this type of analysis and you'll see, you'll start to train your eye to see these patterns. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, guys. And it, and if you expect it to, uh, you know, you, you're not taking this seriously. It's something you really have to practice. Like anything, you have to put in 
uh, put in genuine effort to really get good at this stuff. But I can assure you that over time, if you do put in that, that practice and persistence and, and effort, then you will, you'll also learn this skill and be able to, to analyze the markets in a, a rational and logical fashion and identify these, these high probability trade locations. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'll wrap things up here. I hope you found today's content interesting and useful, and hopefully it's, uh, it will uh, be a, a, another tool to add to your, uh, your trading, trading toolkit. Thanks very much for your time, guys, and I'll catch you all next week.